Hi guys, it's Brandon with Bojaform. Today I'll be going through how to print spheres from SketchUp with a 3D printer. Uh, today you might notice I might not have my contact lens, I'm wearing my bigger glasses. There's no worries, I can still see everything and also do things excellently. Also, I'm doing some new 3D prints. I've been a little bit um, setting it up this year, sort of changing a little bit my operations but I plan to release more content on 3D printing, on some of the designs. Obviously, I've been releasing some stories, but also want to do some talks about those. Also encourage the 3D printing and architecture community just to keep practicing and creating because it is something that really helps both the design process and those who are just trying to fabricate come up with ideas. It's great to keep it. It's a great technology. People should continue on that. All right, so let's get to it. Essentially here, uh, SketchUp is a great program that I have, of course, made several videos about making 3D prints from. And the great thing about it is, is there is solid tools. You can see in this menu here, uh, there are ways of dealing with solids and creating solids. Now for a sphere, which is a unique type of shape, and we're uh, knowing there are several different types of unique shapes, uh, I've used the uh, 3D printer template from SketchUp. And uh, you can actually go that by going new template and then click on 3D printing. Um, I have uh, made the, the units to be centimeters, uh, but I'll show you also how to export this properly. But I'm just trying to go from the beginning to sort of, sort of show you how I got to where I got. Now, there's a question asked about how do you print with zero thickness. And essentially, that's something like this type of object. Uh, this is the profile, and this is the axis that it will be revolved around. And the reason why Sphere is, of course, unique is because of the type of curve and the way that it works with geometry. So one of the things that is the condition is when you're rotating, and this is essentially how you make the SketchUp Sphere. You essentially uh, create a sphere on an axis. It has to be a group uh, or pretty much a solid face. You probably want to delete the top and the bottom, and then you just click on the path. Now, one thing I found is the path actually has a limit, and also the geometry has a limit. Uh, I've just done uh, about 24 as my divisions. Uh, I think that has been the, the best for me because of what, when I go past 24, for some reason it doesn't do a full rotation. So again, this is a, it's, it's, it's not really a surface model. It's, uh, and that's one of the issues it's, it's, it's using really meshes and that's one of the challenges. Anyway, let me go into how to get your sphere from the follow me tool. Okay, so when I select the path, I click on follow me, then all I need to do is click on that face and that face now has revolved and now we have a 3D object. Now if I triple click, you start to see a little bit of the faces and that's sort of uh, SketchUp's way of simplifying, though it's also sort of smoothed what's really going on. And I'm gonna make that a group. And that's actually the thing that I was printing. But that's, uh, of course, the zero thickness. You also can come back, and this is where it gets a little bit complicated. You can actually do uh, thickness in SketchUp. Now, of course, uh, it looks like it would just be a simple, like this is actually a five centimeter uh, diameter, you would just sort of offset the side. Now, I, you could offset, you know, two millimeter, one millimeter, three millimeter, etc. But there's this additional element that you have to consider, that leg that goes back in. And one of the challenges sometimes is that uh, you have that same thing that I was talking about where certain shapes have an issue when you use the follow me. So if I, I click here, again, I'm going to click here and I'm going to change these both. And you see that I can't even change the segments on the offset curve. And so that's one of the one of the challenges I have because even even I'll just show you what happens when I click on follow me for this profile. You'll start seeing two circles above below. So both of these paths did not fully complete. So now I have an open geometry instead of a perfect sphere with a shell. So my way around that, of course, is uh, really going back, making sure that I'm starting 
at maybe 24 and uh, coming back and instead of instead of the process of uh, just offsetting which is a little bit you know random uh, I think it's it might be more wise to do 2.3 if I'm doing a two millimeter uh, shell right and then creating um, a almost another circle within there. And each of these is going to be 12 and 12. And we're gonna look at the 3D print in the final after this, but <clears throat> I wanted to give you a better workflow for creating something that I could actually complete. So now I've created that, I've constructed it. I don't know why it's so difficult, but again, we're working with the mesh modeler. And so now you see I've and I have a shell and what I've created actually is a section box and I will uh, show that and make that visible. Um, let me see here. Can we see it? Okay. Uh, for some reason it's sort of out of the, the viewport, but you can see that I've made a section and you can see my section for my single or zero thickness shell. And here's my two millimeter thickness shell. And the thing is that both of these will print. This will print a lot different than this. And so the idea is if you, if you don't really need to control what's happening on the inside, you might leave it as hollow. If you're creating thickness, there are some things that you need to be considering. But this is essentially how you start it in SketchUp and some ways so you can do it appropriately if you're going to use a thickness or just use that revolve command. Now, here's the way for exporting that. I'm going to go on ahead and turn off uh, section cut. When you're exporting, so again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select all these objects and turn into make group. And it's a solid group, uh, even though it's you know two two uh, spheres, one in, one out. You're going to choose to export this, and I'm going to export this, and I'm going to export it for the class. So I'm going to say class sphere zero shell and what I'm going to do in the options I'm going to make sure to click on export only current selection and uh, I've also clicked on millimeters that's going to be important so I'm going to check for sure how it works it's five millimeter shell and I'm going to go ahead and export that I'll also export the, um, the shell and I'll do that really in the same way and this is going to say class sphere two millimeter shell I'm going to export that okay so we've opened repetitor and we know we want to just be looking at both of our spheres and we'll, we can really even uh, open them at the same time uh instead of i mean load them at the same time so we can see the difference now they're auto placed on the canvas and you really can't see the difference except for there's a little glitching over here in the uh two millimeter shell Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to, just for you know, examination of what's going on, we've clicked on this view cross-section. And that allows us to go up and down. And we now can see that thickness on the right. And there's a zero thickness on the left. So you know, we know which one is the shell and which one is not. And so here's one of the things that makes the big deal for using shell thickness or not. When I go into slicing this, um, that's when things start to get interesting. So I have my print setting. I, you know, I've set up something. I'm going to go ahead and just do it from scratch so you can see the basic. I just will choose the, the speed, typical speed method. I have an MM2, uh, MMU2S. Well, I'm just using one material on a multi-material printer for the Prusa. And no matter which printer you're setting, you have this is going to be a similar area. Uh, we're going to ch change these direct settings later. We're going to go first into the configuration. So in the configuration, uh, it's open with Prusa Slicer, and whichever slicer you're going to be using, you're really going to be going for specific print settings. Okay, um, you know I think you can leave everything pretty basic. And the things that are most important for this are your perimeter, 
uh, and your infill. And so infill can be set sort of in the main dialog for uh, Repetier. So I'm actually going to leave this sort of as it is right here. I'm going to go in my perimeter and I'm going to choose one or leave it at one. And so we're going to take a look at it. Uh, actually, we're going to go, uh, we're going to make sure that this is going to be the one that we're using. So actually, it's uh, this is the one I had edited. We're going to just go for the basic and see what the basic settings are for pretty much a fast sprint at 0.15 millimeter. Uh, it normally actually uses one millimeter minimum. I'm going to put it as, as one. Then I'm going to go to infill. And in infill, I'm going to put uh, zero. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and save this as class uh, one millimeter no infill. This would be very simple. So, so now that we set up our configuration, we're going to go ahead and select that from our print setting menu, class one millimeter no, no fill. And I'm going to talk about some of the direct settings. Okay, this is the, again, the Prusa MK3S multi material, uh, MMU2S single material. I'm using generic PLA. I'm going to have the option to override the settings. I don't really have to, but it's nice to see some of these other options because I do need support. You know, if you don't have that, you can't add support there. But this is, helps me do some sort of uh, simple um, changes. All right, so uh, what I'm going to enable the support for is because this layer can't just be zero on nothing. Like pretty much it needs to have something that it's sitting on so it can adhere to the plate to build the rest of the sphere. So I'm adding the support here. Cooling is just like something I typically go offer. Uh, I just have a simple layer height and this is where I put the info density. Though you can also do that of course in your configuration. I think we're ready to see what it produces. We're gonna go ahead and press slice. Um, now, here's where things get a little funny. Okay, so I have it set in visualization for, this is in my print preview, for a show layer range. And as you can see, there's something inside this view on the right. And there's nothing on the left. That's because I have this one millimeter thickness here, and, but, and my support, and the idea is this shell that was in my SketchUp model means that the support needs to be outside of the shell. And so since I have this interior layer, this is the part that is going to be uh, concerning the, the shell. So the idea is typically in a hollow object, it's not going to put supports. So that's the issue for your shell. Um, there are other settings if you're making shells that you can avoid things like this. But the idea is, since this is a closed object, it's, it's almost as if it's suggesting me to create a base for making this type of object in my program because it's, it's obviously putting one on the inside of here. All right, so as you can see, my one millimeter thickness is, uh, it's the minimum, it's not the maximum. And you're seeing like this little brim here, that's because it's one millimeter, but as it goes higher, it, it won't, you won't see the one millimeter till it goes past that limit. And so that's sort of the, one of the things that makes that particular uh, method a little funky. Okay, so that's us looking at one millimeter and with supports. Obviously, if I take away the supports, uh, it can actually slice that. You'll see that. But the challenge, of course, is there's nothing on the bottom layer um, that it would hold to. And so that's that's a sort of risky thing to do. Uh, you understand if this was very thin, it, it pretty much would fall over. It wouldn't stay on the bit. Okay, but again, you're still seeing the same sort of thing. Uh, here, this would need something to be adhering to the bed so it could um, go forward. We're gonna go back into our configuration now and actually increase the, um, the thickness for the infill. We're gonna make sure it's that same um, starting point. Now we're going to choose uh, actually three millimeters as a minimum. And then we're going to save this and we're going to change the name, of course, to three millimeter uh, no infill. And the reason I'm doing no infill is because it doesn't really need to have infill to do what it needs to do. Um, and that's, of course, one of the great things about the, the surface. It's a solid surface. It, it's not really going to like collapse or anything. 
it's a structural surface. Essentially, a sphere uh, has a structural surface. That's all everything's sort of binding to everything else. Okay, so I've updated that. I'm going to change that here. Um, and um, one thing that I can do, again, I'm leaving all this. This is all fine. I'm going to go ahead and slice again. Now I've turned off support so we can just see it because I've already you know, sort of explained what would be going on there. But now you see that I've added my thickness. As I change the layer range, you can now see three millimeters where it was once one millimeter. And you see it's a lot more solid. Now here's where things get a little tricky. You see that's sort of the 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 height I sort of sort of made it in my modeler. I did make a two millimeter offset. Uh, now the the shell thickness is is actually it's 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 a, it's a little funky in that meaning because obviously um, this millimeter should match. If this is two millimeters, this should be three. It's a bit lot, a little bit larger. The, that's going to be um, a challenge because the sphere doesn't go straight up; it's curving. So that curve is part of that reason why it, it doesn't really ever look that way, or you're starting to see like things that look a lot thinner um, than that two millimeter. Um, but he, here's here's the challenge here. Now, if I want to go and scale my shell for my two millimeter, uh, if I want to say, let me go do 0.5. Now that shell is actually going to be like one millimeter from my model. And as I click on my zero shell, if I scale that as well to be 0.5. Now, if I go to my slicer. And I slice again, you'll see, now I have three millimeters of thickness. Now you'll see that this is going to be changed because I scaled it, but this is actually going to be the same thickness. So that zero millimeter shell is actually come and created, uh, you know, a little preservation because I can always just scale it and choose another thickness or, you know, control my thickness here as opposed to having to go back and model it in. And so that was really useful for me, obviously. Uh, and if I want to scale it, you know, versus doing everything in model, I want to, you know, change it up here. It could be done all with the model. Now is the moment of truth for the actual 3D prints. Finally, here's the uh, final result of my printouts. I have my one millimeter shell right here. Uh, and you can see the the one millimeter is pretty thin, but it didn't get in the way of it being able to print. I removed the support from below, and pretty much with a little sanding, that should come out nicely. Uh, so generally that, you know, they didn't have a problem. But again, like I, I was stating for when that shell came up to the one millimeter thickness, you have a little bit of brim, and you know, if you actually see it, you, it looks like there's a visceral um, line where that went from the thicker to the thinner one. So that's how you know that shell came out. And this actually is a, this is not five centimeters. This is actually 2.5 centimeters. I uh, shrunk it in half a little bit. And so this is my three millimeter. So again, this is just done with my repetitor or, you know, my slicer. And you see the, the, the solid nature of the um, three millimeter all around. And even this is a lot better. This little, again, like some sanding would help you. But at the top, of course, you know, there's, there shouldn't be any issue. Um, and now you do see actually the same sort of shell thing happening um, at the base, but that is, it doesn't show up outside of the object. They both count pretty nice. And, you know, that just gives you some options. Now to solve the issue where we've modeled a thickness shell, in SketchUp, I've created actually a solution for the support in program. And so as you can see here, uh, we have that same uh, two millimeter shell. And I've, I've obviously rescaled this to half. So again, this is consistent thickness. So we set the thickness. It should come out that way from the slicer. And I went ahead and it's actually three millimeter, uh, though it's obviously going to be according to the geometry. Now the difference for here is actually that there actually is no more support on the inside. And one of the ways I did that 
was by going through the configuration and then the proofs of slicer configuration or any configuration you have when you go to your print setting and your support material you know there should be an option that's similar to support on build plate only and this stops uh, any support from happening inside the geometry so it can be hollow on the inside and just have support on the build plate so that was the option that I set up for this and as you can see uh, this type of geometry will not do any sort of inconsistency as it goes up and we just save that and look at those as well now to show the shell print that I modeled the thickness of it actually didn't come out as well as the other prints you know even where this one where I had the three millimeter thickness see there's a smooth consistency all the way through and you see this this one you know I have that shell and you see the shell is consistent all the way through which is nice but when it printed out because of the limitation of the, the SketchUp geometry it actually you know sort of leveled out as it got toward the top and also at the bottom so you read more the flatness versus the shape and also it doesn't look as smooth this way so you know I would, I would suggest you know uh, this might be the place to use a plug-in for a smoother SketchUp sphere as opposed to the one that's made with follow me uh, but at the same time you know who can argue with the fact that the only difference between this and this is that this these had the exact same amount of um, points in, in the sphere and in the arc so you know just do it with zero shell um, again that's this is just in terms of like you want to add this you know a design feature there's no real reason to be making shells because there's a lot more involved in them but you know I told you if you want to do them just be be knowledgeable that you'll have to do a lot more in terms of uh, how they come out sometimes so you know, this whole video is about thinking about what would happen if you chose these different options and so I'm telling you that uh, there's some different ways uh, for right now obviously you can perfect anything uh, with time but like for this little experiment of mine the um, zero thickness came out really really good in comparison you can see it's not that hard to print a sphere sort of at any scale using SketchUp and 3D printing. It just takes a little bit of knowledge for how to get the modeling to work with the final print. A couple settings will help you to perfect it along the way. So I hope you've learned how to sort that out. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, like it. Subscribe to this channel for more content for those doing 3D making, design, architecture. Um, and of course, if you have any suggestions for the next video, Go ahead and put that in my comments. I appreciate your time. Have a great day.